Hi first grade, this is our very last skill cycle in all of first grade. And in this cycle, we're combining a lot of the different vowel rules that we have learned throughout our whole school year and applying that to words that have more than one syllable. And we call those multi-syllabic words. So we're gonna review some of those rules and then we're gonna work on identifying the sounds within words that have more than one syllable. We have two targets. The first is I can identify the vowel sounds in a multi-syllabic word. Our second target is I can use what I know about types of syllables to decode two syllable words. So in the first target, we're gonna just work on identifying vowel sounds. In the second target, we're gonna use the rules and apply them to words that we don't know how to read. So let's review a few of the rules that we've learned this year. So the word candy, we have two syllables in the word candy. And in class, we were practicing by clapping them out. Candy. So we split at can, d. Our a, which is a vowel, is tucked between two consonants. So we call this a closed syllable. And when it is a closed syllable, we read it as a short vowel. That's why we hear the k, a, k, a. We've also learned this year that Y makes two sounds. Y can sound like an I or Y can sound like an E. In the case of candy, it sounds like an E. If we look at the word mistake, let's first figure out how many syllables mistake. And let's split the word miss and take. So again, let's take our first syllable, miss. And because our I is tucked between two consonants, this is also a closed syllable, which means that we read this I as a short I. M, I, S, miss. And then we take the second part of our word, take. And we see one of the rules that we worked on about two months ago, two and a half months ago, the magic E. And we know that we, when we have a magic E at the end of a word, it makes that vowel say its name, which is why in the word take, we hear t, a, k. Remember that when we're working with magic E, we do not hear any sound from the E. When we go back to spell it, however, you have to have the E at the end, otherwise this becomes a short A or a short vowel sound. So we learned about magic E, and we learned about vowel teams. So in the word bean bag, let's first count the syllables, bean bag. So we have two syllables, and we're gonna split it between bean and bag. So we look at the word bean, and we notice that we have two vowels next to each other. And remember, when we have two vowels next to each other, we call that a vowel team. And our little rule is when two vowels go walking, the first vowel does the talking, which is why when we decode this word, we read b, een, bean. We don't hear anything from the a, but remember that when you spell it, you have to put the a in there. Otherwise, this would be read as a um, closed syllable and you'd read it as a short E. Let's look at bag. So A is another vowel and it is tucked between two consonants. So it is a closed syllable. And remember, closed syllables are read as a short vowel. And that's why when we read just the word bag, we read b -a -g, bag and that makes a short A sound. All right, so as a reminder, we've learned a couple of different rules. We learned about that magic E, we've learned about closed or open syllables, we've learned about vowel teams, and last week we worked on vowel patterns. Remember the I-G-H, like in the word night, N-I-T, and we read I-G-H, as an I because we consider it 
kind of like a group, a vowel group. And we talked about that I is the captain of the group. And we're going to hear only from the captain. And that's why I, G, H say I. So these are all of the different rules that we've learned around vowels and vowel sounds. And we're going to apply it now to reading some of these multisyllabic words. So I've gone ahead and I've broken up the words into syllables. So we have the word ticket, tick it. So we know that we're going to read these vowels as short vowels. T -i -k -e -t. When we look at the word beside, we split it between B and side. B -e, this is open. It's not tucked in next to any other consonant. So we read it as a long vowel. B -e -side. And we read this I sound because we have the E at the end, which makes that vowel say its name. Let's go to the next word. So I've already split it for us. Beaver, beaver. So beaver. EA is a vowel team, and we know the rule that when we have a vowel team, the first vowel does the talking. So we read this word b e. In the last syllable, we have an R controlled vowel. So remember, we had the bossy R triplets I R, E R, and U R. And they all make the er sound, b, e, v, er. Let's skip down here to this word. I want you to practice reading it. It's a word that has two vowel teams. And I've gone ahead and highlighted them here for you. So practice reading the first syllable here, and then the second syllable, and putting them together to read the whole word. Okay, when we go to read the whole word, we see r a o rail, r o d road, railroad. So in the word railroad, we have two vowel teams. We have a i and o a. And remember again, that rule is the first vowel is going to do all the talking. If we come down here to the word paper, paper has two syllables, pay, per, and we split it between the A and the P, and we know that we're reading this as a long A because it's open. Remember we talked about that it's like open to the cold, it has nobody up next to it to keep it warm, and those open syllables are read as long vowels, p, A, pay. And we go to our second syllable, per, and again we see a bossy R triplet. That ER says er, p, er, paper, paper. All right, crew, so your job today is to take some of these words and you are going to sort them out. So you'll grab a piece of paper and you're going to make a template that looks like this. And on one side, you're going to have a spot for compound words. And on the other side, you're going to have a spot for non-compound words. And you have two lists of words. And your job is to read each of the words on this list and sort it into a compound word or a non-compound word. And remember, when we're talking about a compound word, this type of word has multiple syllables. A non-compound word has one syllable. So if we look at our list, an example of a non-compound word is a word with one syllable. So let's try the word snake. If we try to break it up into syllables, snake, we quickly recognize it's only one syllable. That is a non-compound word. So I would write the word snake. Let's try the word paper, paper, paper. So I hear two syllables, paper. 
A word with multiple syllables, so more than one, is a compound word. And that's going to go under my word sort for compound. Okay, so your job is to create a chart on your paper at home and use these words on this word list to sort them into the correct spot. So either a compound word or a non-compound word. Let's see if I can move these up for you guys. All right, so again, you're gonna use these word lists and you're gonna sort them into a compound word or a non-compound word. And you're gonna upload that list to Dojo, okay? So use some extra paper at home. If you have some, you can use a whiteboard, but you're gonna make a T-chart just like this. And like Miss Ackerman showed you, you're gonna go down and read each of these words. And you're gonna sort them into the correct section, okay? Once you have all of those uploaded, you're gonna snap a picture and you're gonna upload your list to Dojo. So if you need to go back and get your materials, go ahead and pause. If you need to go back and get a better picture of the lists side by side, it's a little tricky for me to get everything on our picture at one time. Let's try this. That won't work. <laughs> Sorry, first grade. All right, so these are the word lists that you're reading from. Sort them into compound words or non-compound. Take a picture and upload it to Dojo.